Welcome to Highline Excel 2013 class video number 49. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for week 9, click on the link below the video. Wow, we have a great video here. We're going to do a chart for break even analysis. We're going to see the formulas in chart and even plotting the break even point on the chart. Now let's go over to this BE answer. Here's what we want. Here's our end result. Fixed costs sales, and from the very beginning of fixed costs are total costs. Here's all the formulas going to have to do. But what we want to be able to do is simply change any of our inputs. Our inputs are going to be uh, unit price, variable costs, and total fix. And watch what happens to the chart. In particular, that break-even point. When I change this 50 to 45, boom, instantly the whole chart updates, and we get our marker that updates. I'm going to Control Z. Let's go see how to do this. And we'll even make it a little bit cooler than this one. Back over to BE. All right, so here's all of our inputs for all of our formulas. The first thing is units. So I want to start with 0 and then 100, 200, 300. We're going to assume different units, figure out what the total sales, variable cost, contribution margin, fixed total cost, and net income will be at various units. All right, ready? Equals, and our start unit will be 0. Enter. Equals one cell above relative cell reference plus the units increment, and I'm going to lock it with the F4 key. Control Enter, drag it down. We can click in the last cell and see, sure enough, it got 900 plus that 1,000. All right, so the sales are going to be equal whatever the units are relative cell reference times our unit price. F4 to lock that, Control Enter. Actually, F2, let's be smarter than this. Notice we set up units price and unit variable cost, and the sales and variable cost columns are next to each other. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to use mixed cell references. I need the units here and here, but when I go down a row, I need it to move to the 100 and then the 200. So with my cursor touching A8, I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three times, lock the column reference, but not the row. All right, and then the units price, it needs to be locked when I go down. But when I move the formula from the B column to the C column, I need that orange box to move over to variable cost. So this one I need locked only on the row, but not the column. So I hit F4, dollar sign only in front of the number, which is the row reference, but not the letter, which is the column reference. Control Enter. Now watch this. Before I click in this cell here, I'm going to hold Shift. Click so they're all highlighted. And then that active cell, I hit F2, Control Enter to populate that formula into all the cells. I go to the last cell and hit F2. Boom, it works perfect. All right, contribution margin, we take equals the sales relative cell reference minus our variable cost. Control Enter, double click and send it down. Contribution margin says how much is left over when we take our sales minus the variable cost for our product. What's left over to cover fixed costs and profit? Fixed costs for our chart, we're going to need this 4,000 bucks all the way down. So equals, and then I click on that 4,000 F4 to lock it. Control Enter, double click and send it down. 4,000 all the way down, that's going to be our horizontal line. Total cost equals whatever the fixed costs are plus our variable cost. Control Enter, double click and send it down. The total cost will be the line that goes up from the horizontal fixed cost line. This sales line will start at 0 and go up uh, diagonally. All right, net income, we could calculate this two ways. I'm going to say, hey, sales minus total cost. Those are relative cell references. Control Enter, double click and send it down. We could do this a second way. We could say, hey, contribution margin minus the fixed cost. Because contribution margin is made up of fixed and profit. So if we subtract fixed cost from contribution margin, we get what's left over, which is our net income. Now, the beautiful thing about all these formulas, including the start number, the increment, if I change this to 100, watch what happens to our whole table of formulas. Instantly, everything updates, Control Z. If I change this to 70, boom, everything updates, Control Z. Same with unit price, variable cost. In fact, we're going to start with 50 here. Those will be our starting numbers. Now, 
we're going to plot our lines. And this is going to be an xy scatter. Now, back in video 41, we talked about the xy scatter. And we, we saw how we took sample data. It was student test scores and time studied. Since that's sample data, we plotted it with the xy scatter. But here, this is a model we've built. These are formulas. And so we're going to use xy scatter with a line. Now, here's the x value. Notice all of these values are dependent on the x. And we're allowed to plot 1x with a y value, which is sales, the fixed cost, and the total cost. And we don't have to add each one of these series of values individually. We can do it all at once. Check this out. We're going to highlight units and sales, x and a y. And now I'm going to use my Control key. Highlight the two labels at the top and these additional two y values. Now, with that data, the charting wizard for xy scatter will interpret it perfectly. Anytime the x is to the left, any subsequent columns will be considered separate y values. So now I go up to Insert, Charts, the scatter. Remember, the dots, the scatter plots, are for sample data. But when you have a model, you can go ahead and use the lines. Just like that, we have our lines. And that's pretty cool just right there alone. Now let's get rid of this chart title. I'm going to hit Delete. I'm going to get rid of these horizontal lines, Delete. The vertical lines delete. Click on the legend Control-1 to open up our task pane. I'm going to say at the top. We're going to amend that and this uh, in just a, while, just a bit. We definitely want to add some labels here. So I'm going to add axis titles. Scroll over. Now, this vertical axis label I don't really need. Well, the legend at the top will say what the dollar amounts are. So I'm going to hit Delete. But over here, I'm going to link this because this is unit. So I'm going to hit F2 to send it to the formula bar, equal sign, and then click on Units. All right, now, if we change something like the units price to 45, instantly our chart updates. But now we want to do that intersecting value. I'm going to Control Z and leave it 50. Now let's scroll down here just a little bit. The formula for break-even units, I always forget what it is and, and remember the basics and then do algebra. Well, if we have our units times the contribution margin per unit, Ta minus all of the fixed costs, that means we'd be at exactly profit 0. So I set up this formula, and then I solve it for units using algebra. So our formula is really units equals fixed costs minus the contribution margin for a single unit. So I'm going to come to this cell, say equals fixed cost divided by, in parentheses, unit price minus variable price. So that formula will give us the units. 267. Now, if I increase the decimals, I think there's some extraneous decimals. And I want this rounded to the unit. So I'm going to use the round function, comma, 0, close parentheses. Control Enter. So there we go. And then I, now I'm going to decrease, because I don't want that to show up on the chart. Now, the break even y, we simply say, oh, hey, the x value. That's how many units we have to sell to get exactly to break even times the unit price. Now, I'd like a label because I want to add. These lines are x, y lines based on a bunch of units or x's and a bunch of y's. But here we have a single x and a single y. And we're going to add it to our chart and change the, the type so it shows a marker. But we want a cool label up here. Now, this is a approximate break even point. So I'm going to say approximate break even units equals. And actually, I'm going to change this so it's dynamic. Watch this. In double quotes, we're going to do a text formula, space. Right now, it's just the text, but I want to join it to whatever our calculated number will be here. Control-Enter. So now if I were to change something, right? 
this updates and our label on the chart will update also. Control Z, so it's back to 50. Now we need to plot this. I'm going to select the chart, go up to Design. And the trick to a lot of advanced charting is Select Data. I'm going to click Select Data. And in our Legend Entry series, I'm going to say Add. The name of the series, well, that's going to be our label. The x value is going to be this break-even x. Now, remember we talked about this in an earlier video. Sometimes this array element uh, is here. Be sure to delete it, because sometimes it'll get in the way. And our y value will be this 13,350. Click OK. Click OK. And there we cannot see it, because it's considered a line. We're going to do our trick. Select a certain chart element, and I'm going to use my up arrows until I see just that one. Remember, you can also go to Format and use the drop down in the current selection. All right, there it is. I'm going to come over to Format Data Series. It looks like it just happens to be on the right Format tab. Click Marker. I'm going to say Solid Fill. Actually, let's go, well, solid fill red is fine, but I want to come to marker options. Built in, something like that, what, whichever one you want. Maybe this triangle. And I'm going to increase the size. Oh, this is so cool. Now, watch this. If we change this to 45, boom, that thing updates and shows us exactly on the chart. Not only that, but let's make it even cooler. Let's add a label. So I'm going to add data labels. Now, I don't want to do that one. Actually, I want to click exactly on that one and do data labels. And there we have it. We can even come to more. Let's do call out. And then I'm going to come over to, actually, let's do more options over here. Labels, I think we can decide to just show. I just want to see the break-even units, not the uh, Y. That one's cool if we have that right there. You know what? We could even remove that in just a second and come up here since we created our label right there, which has the 400. We can include just like that. That's pretty cool. Then we can come up and click once, click a second time. When we see that selected, we can hit Delete. Oh, that is so cool. Now let's try it. Actually, you could format however you want. If you wanted that legend up there, then you wouldn't have to remove it. But let's try it. I'm going to change the unit price. I'm going to close this, scroll over a bit. Actually, let's make the chart big. And here is. Uh, 50, right? And boom, it just totally updates. Variable cost is 25. Boom. Control Z, Z. You could try it, whatever numbers here you'd like. That is a, a break even analysis XY chart. We plotted it from our formulas, our model. We even plotted the break even units on our chart. All right, that's it for charts. We'll see you next video.